Hi, and welcome to a new episode of Collectors Gonna Collect. In this episode, I'm gonna be talking about my vintage doll and toy collection, latest finds. So I realized that I had, over the summer, been going to a lot of thrift stores and taking trips and buying little dolls here and there and toys. And I realized that I hadn't done a video about a bunch of them. And so I had to make one. <laughs> um, and I can't really group these. I mean, we've got dolls here and we've got kitsch and we've got, you know, that's a thermos. So like, I couldn't say it was just dolls. It's not even just toys, but um, I think any collector might be interested in a lot of this stuff. So I just kind of had to group them all together and called it doll and toy <laughs> um lots of cool stuff here so let's just like dig in right away okay so let's start with this dolly so i'm gonna move this one okay so she is so cute i found her at a little store here in montreal she so her face is um rubbery and her body is stuffed and she has very, very, very dark skin and blue eyeshadow, which makes me think that maybe she's from the 80s. But the fact that her body is stuffed like this makes me think that she isn't. But she has no tags and there's no information um, anywhere about her. I love her little bonnet. She's got hair here, which is a little out of control. She's got a sweet little face, bright red lips, green eyes. And then she's got this cute little dress with the lace detailing and she's got yeah the lace goes all the way around the bottom and she's got little polka dot shoes on she was just so cute I couldn't I couldn't resist her I really couldn't resist her and everyone knows if you've been watching my videos I love a doll of color so she and she's she's so dark too but like has kind of a little smirky face I really loved her and I love the you know like the way she's wearing this on top of her head that's just so cute so I had to get her, don't know anything about her. She doesn't have a time period and I don't know. And I'm just gonna have to live with that. That's just how that's gonna be. So there you go. Then let's go and talk about this little one here. So this is a strawberry shortcake doll. At one point, I guess they started making baby dolls like this. So she's very, very small, as you can see when I'm compared to my hand. Um, and I think they were called berry babies and they came with like a little bottle. And I think I had the strawberry shortcake one, but this is the lemon meringue one. So she's got a little bonnet and she's got little socks and she's wearing kind of like a little, little matching, you know, underwear <laughs> and her little dress. And could she be more cute? So cute. I think I got, oh no. Okay. Well, that sock's falling off and I'm not going to be able to get it back on with one hand. So we're just going to go like that. But um, I went to this really great uh, sort of uh, vintage or thrift mall instead of like where like a whole bunch of people have booths. Anyways, it's in Ontario and it's kind of a little bit close to Hamilton. And so when I go in the summer to visit my friend in Hamilton, I won't have to stop by this place. This is my second time trying it out. And I was so happy to find her. So now this cookie jar here. So this is, uh, I got this one and her at the same place, which is funny because they match a little bit, like with the red and the black and the white. Um, so this is definitely kitsch. Um, I don't, I haven't actually looked for any markings on this cookie jar to see if it says where it's from. What does that say, people? Made in, I see Japan. And then it says Montreal in it. <laughs> it's funny because I'm in Montreal and that's where I bought it. So <laughs> anyway, so it's a cookie jar um, with a little hat. It's a panda and I think the panda is holding a, let's, let's pretend that's a piece of honey and that's why there's bees. Um, and these eyes, I mean, can you even, I don't think that it's like particularly rare because when I put in kitsch cookie jar panda, uh, the exact same one came up, although in much worse condition, like this one, 
it's not that bad. Like the paint, like especially the eyes are really still really nice. Um, and it's not like the, the paint is not chipping off. So I'm actually quite impressed. Um, and yeah, so I saw it in the store and I just could not resist. And of course I'm probably not going to put cookies in it and it's going to just have to become part of my kitsch collection. Although I have no idea where I'm going to put it because my kitsch shelf is so full. Um, but yeah, totally love this, this little guy. He's so cute. Um, okay. Then we've got over here, let's put him here. So this is a little elf. So I don't really understand, like the, this elf looks like a grandpa version of Elf on the Shelf, but I don't think that Elf on the Shelf, I don't know if Elf on the Shelf is what started these elves that are hug their knees like this. I believe they're from the 60s and this is like a little, it's like a grandpa, but like the hair is blonde. So I don't know, <laughs> maybe just like a guy who has a beard. Um, And look at his little outfit. He's got a little patch on his knee and I got him super, super cheap. I feel like I paid maybe five bucks for him at, um, at the St. Michel flea market in Montreal. So, which is another one of those like big ones that has like a lot of people selling their stuff it's like a huge flea market um and a permanent one. Oh, what does it say there oh nothing that interesting anyway so cute i love him um at some point when we're closer to christmas i'm going to show you guys my wreaths that i've made i've made a couple of wreaths and i, I put sort of like little characters little elves and, and 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 vintage stuff on the wreath so I have two elves like this on one of my wreaths so I can show you that at one point he's so cute the guy was really excited when I bought him he was like oh I wanted someone good to come he said it in French anyway I can't do the accent right now it's too much pressure um okay so then this is I got this in Toronto we found this oh we found this really great um store that was selling vintage stuff but of course when you say vintage stuff it's usually like when it's 80s stuff like this it ends up being a store that's only for guys I don't want to say that because of course girls like this stuff too but it was like a lot of comic book things a lot of Japanese stuff and then it and then it did have old stuff but it was all old stuff that boys would like so it was transformers it was teenage mutant ninja turtles it was star wars stuff but luckily gremlins is kind of a boy type movie but it was one that i loved when i was a kid so this is a gremlins thermos this is it even says stripe is a gremlin gizmo is a mogwai gremlins gizmo looks a little bit freaked out in this picture um and that stripe and then let me try to okay if i use my other hand maybe i can on my knees maybe i can open it so it opens now i did not have this thermos Ooh. i don't know what's going on in there but i didn't oh you can see i paid 20 bucks for it oh and it says keeps hot keeps cold conserve show oh, okay it says it in french and english this is in canada so it definitely was purchased in Canada. This was not an import. But anyway, I did not have this thermos, but I had a thermos exactly like this, right? Like with this color. It's totally familiar for anyone who grew up in the 80s. So apparently this thermos from the Gremlins came out in 1984, which is funny because this girl's also from 1984. 1984 was a big year. I would have been about uh, four or five years old. So yeah, I could not. I mean, I do not collect lunch boxes I do not collect thermoses but this was just too freaking cool <laughs> so I had to, I had to get it I had to get it and I, I can't be stopped collectors gonna collect that's all I can say about that um then I got this little guy so I got this little guy at a crazy outdoor flea antiques flea market um in La Chute, Quebec which is north okay I don't know if it's north. It's 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 about I guess an hour away from Montreal. And I drove up and there was this amazing booth. Oh look, so it's it's a wind up toy and I wound it up, but it won't walk on the velvet couch. There's the winder. Could he be more cute? He's a little elephant. He's so cute. Oh, I dropped him. Okay, wait. 
What does it say? What does it say? Made in China. Yeah, I literally don't know the year. I have no idea. It could be just a remake. Or it could be... But look at his eyes. It could be really old. I don't know. This really great booth had all kinds of tin toys like this. And this was the only one I could afford. They were so expensive. And I don't have a huge collection of these because... I decided to calm down, but this one was too adorable. So I'm going to put them up on my, on my windowsill with the other ones that I do have. Um, I think I showed you in the past a little cat that I got last year. So this is my little elephant now, and he's so cute. Okay, so now we've got a Cupie. So, okay, I'm just going to... So this is a Cupie doll... I actually thought, okay, so it looks like it's composition to me. It has the the little cracks that are called something that I've forgotten now. But otherwise, it's in very good condition. It's not chipped. So it says Cupie on the heart. And it says copyright Rose O'Neill. Something, something. On the back, it's got the little wings. There's its little butt. There's a hole here. But there's no year. It is like these arms are like they're uh, whatever. There's an elastic that's like holding them. You know what I mean? But it like I don't know what year this is from. I actually thought I had been duped and that it was only from like because it looks really old. But I thought maybe it was actually from the 80s. But then I looked more closely at those eBay listings. And no, those ones were plastic. So maybe this is really old. And just happens to be in really good condition. Like, look at the hair even has, like... Oh, there's a little chip there. But the hair has, like, the coloring and everything. I mean, yeah, it's not in great condition. But, like, pretty freaking good. Like, these ones, I've often found them in, in terrible, terrible condition. So, I was really excited. And this one I found also at the same thrift mall or flea market mall or whatever you want to call it. This and, and this. I, I got them both there. So... And that's like when we took a trip to Toronto this summer and I went to Hamilton. So yeah, so that's a Cupid doll. I have a little Cupid collection. I guess I'm going to have to do a video of them, but mostly they're plastic. So, um, and I only have like three. Uh, so this one was like a really, really cool find. So that's good. So then I got these dolls. So we found, because I was in Toronto, I was like, well, got to look up vintage stores. Got to look for some old dolls. Got to see what antique stores we've got going on. And these two I found at the same crazy store. Like it was on some weird street. And we go in and it was just a jumble of stuff and a kind of odd looking guy working there. And I was just like, oh no. But I went upstairs and I found these dolls. And I was super happy. <laughs> so, okay. This one is definitely, I thought she was a, a, a Miss Revlon doll, but I realized as once I got home that I had gotten a little carried away. No, she's not a Revlon doll. This is definitely a clone doll. So a doll that's made to look like Miss Revlon, but is not Miss Revlon. However, she's pretty good. Like, even though one of her eyes, like, it looks like one of them's like more... Like, these eyelashes maybe aren't as long or as curled or something. But anyway, she's pretty good. She has earrings. She's got a velvet stole going on. This dress, I don't know what color it was originally. Now it's kind of like a gray, but it's long. And does she have shoes? No, no shoes. And I think there's something going wrong with her feet. But she's in pretty good shape. Like, I don't usually like clone dolls, and these type tend to start looking a little bit crazy, consider that it would have been from the 50s, but I think she, I might even keep her and not just keep the outfit. She wasn't expensive, and I like her earrings. So I'm giving her a chance. Um, Her hair is actually, oh, okay, wait, I'm going to move the Cupid doll, and then I'm going to show you her hair at the back. Don't fall. Okay. Yeah, like her hair is pretty good. And it's got a nice vibrant color. So, yeah, I just, I want to give her a chance. I'm going to give her a chance. Okay, her stole is falling off. I've, I've ruined her. Okay, this one, though. Oh, my God. Look at her. Okay, so, yeah, the stole fell off in the background there. Okay, wait. Stay, 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 stay. Okay. 
could this doll be more fantastic? I can't even talk about her. Like, look. Okay, so this is a doll. First of all, I love her face. Very sweet face. Um, it's a reliable doll. So that was a, a Canadian brand. Um, and I don't know what years reliable was going on but this outfit could not be more 70s if it tried so it has to be from the 70s she's wearing a like a romper thing there's like a bell sleeve going on or maybe that means it's 60s she's got a poncho <laughs> i these clothes like i would have even if the doll had been hideous i would have bought the doll just for these clothes but she's so cute Look at her face. And her eyes are really good in good condition. I'm assuming 60s or 70s, this outfit, you guys. This outfit. Um, I love her. So I am very, very excited to have her. And uh, the store fell down. So yeah, so those were my two finds in Toronto doll-wise. Then I got, we went, <laughs> this is not vintage, but I tend to think that Hello Kitty... Okay, Hello Kitty's not vintage, but whatever. These are cool. <laughs> I got these. They're little erasers. They're shaped like Hello Kitty, and I think you can take them apart. Like the bow comes off, and the and the head comes off, and you like put it together. Although I don't know what these two pieces are. Anyways, they're cute, and I just had to put them in the video, so they don't really make sense with my title of everything being vintage. But whatever, you'll just have to deal with it. <laughs> I don't care. Okay. Um, and then last but not least, I got these guys. So I got these at the store where I got the Gremlin, um, the Gremlin Thermos. And this would be a really great find because in a store that's mostly got vintage stuff for guys, this is great. As you can see, these are mini dolls and it says 1975. They are Raggedy Ann and Andy from Knickerbocker in the little box. Well, you can also get, oh, Pebbles and Bam Bam. I'd love to have those ones. Oh, and it says 1973 here, but 1975 on the front. Okay, so let me open the box. The box is openable and I will take it out. So yeah, I mean like plastic, um, but so cute, real little clothes on them. I mean, adorable. And then, okay, let me get you. Andy. Andy's wearing a little hat that was not painted on very well. And I was like, what's wrong with his head? And then I'm like, oh, it's his hat. Anyway, um, <laughs> but still so cute. Could they be more cute together? I was so excited and I, I just grabbed them on my way. They were beside the cash and I was like, just add that on. Just add it on. I can't. I'm going to collect. Why am I dropping everything? Okay, hold on. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. So cute. And the fact that they were in the box and they were only like 20 bucks. So, all right. I kind of messed everything up and things are kind of half falling over. But this, this so that's my latest finds. That's everything. Hope you liked this video. See, look, like she's really pretty. I think I'm going to keep her. They're so tall, though. What is up with the fashion dolls of the 50s and 60s? Like, what? Where are you going to find a shelf that big? I don't understand. Anyway, um, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please like and subscribe. And tell me what you think in the comments. Thanks so much. Peace out.